Look, he said, what's up, man? What's going on, brother? What's up? What's up, K-O-L-A-T-E-R? Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah, what's up, man? 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 <laughs> hey, he's old, all right. You're too old about it. Hey, you ready, friends? Yep, yeah, I'm ready. How long, how long can you talk for? I know it's last minute. Uh, I talk, how long can we talk, babe? And yeah, we do, you know, I guess close to an hour, 50 minutes. Okay, okay we just talk. We just talk, and then just text me. When you, when you ready to go, just text me. I'll just text you. Okay, okay, okay. Right, so we're going to start off. I'm just, we're going to start off. I just want to ask you a thousand questions. We're gonna start off with the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You know my history, so right, go no, ahead. No bullshit. All right, all right. Hold all right. on. Let me put this in right quick, gentlemen. Hey, Bob, be ready. Uh, send me the link on Facebook. I'm already on the ice. All right, let's go. Oh, is it coming live on Facebook, Money? Yeah. Okay. okay. Don't put on my Facebook. <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna tag. You. All right. Cool. Yep. Tag me. So we have like 5,000 people checking us out. Oh, that'd be huge. Yeah. Louis, stop hating, man. Stop hating because you ain't on the show. It's hating ass. <laughs> hating ass. This dude hating on me, man. <laughs> dude. Where are you going, little girl? Louis ain't going nowhere. He's, he still got to do the, the stairs. He ain't going nowhere. I got to do a lot of handyman work. So, you know, okay. give him a couple of lines here and there. So, you know, <laughs> so he can survive and buy himself some food. <laughs> I'm sorry. 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 i am Yep, give him a right, nice right. Okay. Bang. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan the kisser. <laughs> All right. Y'all ready? Yeah. yeah. Fred is so it's Fred's Okendo, right? I want to make sure I pronounce your last name right. Fast Fred's Okendo. Fast Fred's yeah, Okendo. Go. Let's go. There you go. All right, here we go. Welcome to the latest edition of the Montel, Bo Montel Griffin Ice Boxing Show with your host, Montel Ice Griffin, former light heavyweight champion of the world. And then we got a special guest in here today, the heavyweight. He, he ruled the heavyweight division. He was knocking people out. He was doing his thing. Give it up, man, for friends of Kendo, man. What's up, big guy? All right, man. Happy to be here with my big bros. Well, money man, you 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 got the you got your you got all the boxes, man, and you got all the guys, man. You got all the top boxes, man. He's you know what I'm saying. This this my man. He he not only a, a great boxer, a guy who did a lot in the game. He he my friend. I I like to call him my friend first. Okay. Uh, I've been doing fast fast friends since '92. How was you in '92, first? Man, I was man. '92, I was 18. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay. So we four years apart. So you you forty. Yep. 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 Eighteen. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. You was you was light heavyweight back then. You was a fast. Right. Yep. Light heavyweight. heavyweight. Yep. Um, you, I mean, it was great work. You gave me a lot of. You gave me great work. You kept me on my toes because you was fast as hell. You was a good puncher. You had a little herky jerky style, so it's kind of <laughs> you know it throws you off. You know every every Bob every boxer tell you they would rather fight a. A guy that they know what he gonna bring to the table. Friends right. is a fast, uh, itchy type guy. Trigger, you know, trigger type guy. He'll pull the shot and catch you off guard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. He had, the, he had the speed and he was punching good at like heavyweight. I met him in '92. Uh, I think we was all at the. Oh shit! I said we was all at the fight. You was fighting Nate Jones, and me and Floyd Mayweather. Right. Me, me and Floyd Mayweather watched the fight, and you know. Yep. It was a close fight, man. I, I thought I thought you pulled it. I mean, you fought Nate three times. Um, yeah. I think you you deserve a, you know you deserve to win a win. Uh, it was a close fight. It was a close fight. 
You know, right, me and right, Floyd, right. as we, me and Floyd was talking as we watched the fight. And Floyd was like, man, <sighs> see, see, Floyd didn't know you like I knew you, so. Right, right, right. His strong, he was straight pro Nate, because Nate was his guy. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Even though, even though, you know, we won the National Golden Gloves together in 93. Oh, okay, that, okay, all right, all right. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so you, you fought. <clears throat> I you better hear you, Manny. Tell, tell Louie to be quiet. Tell Louie to be quiet. I'm trying uh, to listen. Hey, be quiet, guys. Tell me doing the show. Be tell quiet, Louie, please. I'm gonna come over there and give him a three piece. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's what I'm gonna have to do in a second. So 92, I met you. you fought heavyweight, you fought heavyweight in the amateur <laughs> waiting the trials. In 96. Well, what happened in, what happened during the trials and everything? Uh, in 96, you know, I ended up fighting my old nemesis, my crosstown rival. It's crazy because Nate was representing Cabrini Green housing projects. I was representing Latham Homes housing projects on Clyburn Damon University. You know, we were both from the north, northwest side, Chicago. And um, it's crazy that we're two of the best fighters in the country in the heavyweight division, you know, we're like, we live like a mile apart, you know. He, he's from the you know, from the projects a little further south than me. And uh, yeah, I fought Nate in the 95 National Golden Glove Finals at Lowell, Massachusetts. That was in 95. And then in 96, I ended up fighting him in the Chicago Golden Glove Championship. And he was already, you know, pretty much in the Olympic, he already qualified. But, you know, it's unfortunate, Nate, no, you know, I, I'm just coming back home, you know, I did. I did a little vacation, you know, we can talk a little bit more about that. So when I got back, you know, I was just getting my skills back back up to, to par. You know, I, you know, got in a little trouble and whatnot. So when I was coming back, you know, you know, I fought the Golden Gloves and Nate Hurd, you know, I'm back home and here I am, just a couple of fights later, fighting Nate, you know, the two, three time national Golden Glove champ. And stuff like that, and um, you know, it was a fight that I thought I even won. Even Anthony Stewart, who uh, was, was Nate Jones' childhood buddy from the Greens, you know, he even thought I won. He came up to me and hugged me. You know, this is you know, Nate Jones' childhood buddy. You know, he hugged me and told me and my family, Friday, you won that fight, man. You, you know, Anthony Stewart, don't you, Monty? Like heavyweight, for Anthony Stewart, that was uh, Terry McGroom brother. Yeah, you fought Anthony Stewart, Monty? I, I sparred Anthony. I sparred Anthony. Oh, you sparred? Okay. What, what, what did you guys spar at? I, I, dropped him, I dropped him with a jab at Fuller Park, but he probably don't want to talk about it. <laughs> 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 we was at Fuller uh, Park. He threw a jab. I, I stepped back and counted and let him run right into it. And I dropped him with a jab, but he you know, he probably don't want to call it. You know, but, Anthony Stewart was good. He, he actually beat Antonio Tarv in the amateur. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. In the Nationals, right? In the U.S. Championship, money. He beat Antonio Tarv in the Nationals. So, Anthony Stewart was a very respected amateur in, in Chicago boxing and the United States around the world. Hey, did you know one thing, though? A lot of people don't know, money. Probably will say it on the show. I was only one of the fighters that fought. Me and Anthony fought three times, and I beat them all three times in the amateurs. Wow. Oh yeah, that was that light yeah. heavyweight, right? Light heavyweight. Yeah, light heavyweight. Did you know that? I didn't know. I didn't know you fought that. I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I fought him three times. Yeah. Anthony beat. was at uh, Terry's uh, funeral. That was the first man, time I, I heard over twenty years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's like my brother. Me and Anthony, we like we got a lot of great, great history. Yeah. So you you grew up ten minutes from from Brittany Green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up in Latham Homes. It's crazy because I got a little story, you know, me and Anthony, even Nate, you know, I used to hang out with them. I used to go by the Greens. I, I remember Floyd used to come to the Green, hang out with, Flo, with with Nate, you know, that was Nate's boy. Right. And it was back in 94, something like that. What year and, did um, you fight yeah. Nate? At the what, year? what year did you fight him at St. Andrews? Oh, in St. Andrews, I fought Nate in 90 and 96. Cause in '95 we were in Lowell, Massachusetts. Yep, yep. And St. Andrews it was in '96. Golden Gloves, the Golden Gloves. So, yeah, Golden so Gloves, you, yeah. you, you, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't make it to the trials. He stopped me from making it to that. So I was get to yeah. 
So Nate okay, right. didn't want me to get hot, you know what I'm saying? Right. Again, I came back home, you know, I had a little vacay, you know, I was a knucklehead, you know, that street life stuff, you know, that's why I, you know, I advise all these shorties, it ain't, it ain't no shortcut in, in life, you know, even my kids gotta work. So yeah, so Nate ended up, you know, coming back to shy. Everybody's like, Nate, but you know, Tom O'Shea, you know, he's a great coach and you know, he knew, he knew me very well. He said, man, Nate, you, pretty much you gotta fight him now because another couple more fights, you know, from now, this dude's gonna be back to his form. Right. And, you know, and they gave him the edge. And, you know, I got that tape to this day, you know, I'm gonna post it on Facebook one day. And so, have everybody give me that. Look, huh? wait a minute, let me, let, let, let me tell everybody the whole story. Uh, Bobby Reed, uh, uh, <laughs> now, now they fought three times. Fred mm -hmm. felt he won the third fight. Now, the, right. the thing that's ironic, Nate Jones is his trainer right now. That's his <laughs> trainer. So he, he's, oh, your trainer. That's he's your trainer. He's your trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's been my trainer for like, man, believe it or not, it's crazy. Like 12 years. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So y'all ain't never just been in the dressing room and you just say, hey, Nate, you know I beat you. Just admit it. <laughs> you know what, Nate? And I, you know, Nate, you know, pretty much, he's like, you know, it could win either, you know, he, he say, you know, it could have went either way, but you know, it is what it is. But you know, people know, he knows, deep, I can see deep down his heart. He, he knows, he knows I beat him. He knows it. How did you get robbed though? Politics, you know, he was a golden boy and, and you know, he, they wanted to make that story. You know, he's from Kimberly Green, you know, he was in the gang, you know, selling drugs and you know, they wanted him to be that poster child of, that, you know, I mean, which should have been mine, but you know, it was just, Politics, man. Politics. Okay. Well, okay. Let me say this then. I would. I want you to do me a favor. When you when you get your title shot in the eleventh round, when you go off in the last round, and they say, "Look, champ, <laughs> winning the fight. You're looking good. You're doing good. Just ask them. Say, hey, tell the truth. Didn't I beat you? In the eleventh <laughs> round, going after the last round. Just ask them. Say, hey, <laughs> hey tell the truth. Didn't I beat you? That's a good one. Hey, he gotta tell the truth. <laughs> It's like having it on TV, okay. That's a good one. If you won every round and you know you're gonna be heavyweight champion of the world, just say, look, Nate, did I beat you? And he gotta be honest because you might fire him. You might fire him <laughs> and get rid of him. Right, right. That's a good one. That's a good one. You might fire him and bring me on board, so you need to ask him, say. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, 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 but but man, um, 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 you guys are cool though, right, Monty? Because I know my man. Uh, you got... go away. You know, Nate real silly, bro. Nate, Nate's a silly guy. That's my man. <laughs> okay. He, okay. Know, he's about like, oh him. man, I ain't, talk, I ain't talk to Montel. I ain't, I'm like, what do you mean to talk to Montel? He, he, man, he, he didn't he, want me to train with Sean. He didn't want me to train uh, uh, Sean Dell. He didn't want me to train. You know, I, I guess he was hurt. He was hurt because he didn't get your blessing to be in the same corner. So he still cries to me about it. How can I stop him from training Shondell and he was training Shondell before me? How? How? Right, right, right. It's all good, but I mean, you know, it, it's all in jokes. It's all in jokes. So, so look, check this out. So, so okay, so 96, you didn't get invited to the trials. So I know that probably right. had to, you know, break your heart and everything. When did you know, okay, look, it's time to move on and turn pro? Fred's and froze up. Yeah, he just got to hit his link here. Fred's and froze up. Went outside. Froze? He didn't went too oh, far. yeah, we can still hear you, though. He took, he took, he went too far away from the Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, okay, hold, hold on. I'll catch what it is. Hold on. He got Chase, one bedroom got... Wi-Fi. He only work in one room in his house. <laughs> hey, tell your mom not to do that, Fred. Uh, whatever she's doing. Right, right, all right, go ahead. I'm back. I'm back with Wi Fi. All right, go ahead. Fred is back. Hey, Fred, just stand in one spot. Don't go out. If you make two feet to your left, it's going to cut out. <laughs> all right. All right. When did you know hey, it was time to turn pro? Yeah. When did you know? You said, when did I know when I was going to turn pro? You know, okay, look, the amateurs ain't for me. It's time to turn pro. Yeah, I, I kind of right after, you know, right after not making the Olympic trials and actually 
I think I fought a couple, mm, like a fight of two or three after Nate's fight. And my final fight was in Kazakhstan. I was in Team USA versus Kazakhstan. And uh, I guess uh, that was right after the Olympics. And that was my last amateur fight. And uh, when I came back home, I decided to turn pro and, and, um, and, you know, the rest was history when, you know, I had a couple of offers, you know, on the table. That's huge. That's huge. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So, all right, so cool. look, okay. I'm, I'm checking out, I'm looking at your, uh, you know what I'm saying, your, your career. You, uh, mm-hmm. oh, no, nah, let me see. Okay, your career, you started off in 97. May of 97, yeah. Mark Johnson. <laughs> Guys, but I want to slow down. I want to go. I want to slow scroll down to two, four. Six. But you know what? When, when I had that, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mike. Hey, Stace, you can't do that, babe. Uh, please. Um, you know, uh, on that Mark Johnson fight, my debut. You know who was the main event that night, right? Bef- before he ended up going for a little vacation. Um, Michael Nunn. You know, he was with America Presents. And uh, man, I did my debut on his undercard, and East, I think East Moline. And man, that was the last time I seen Michael Nunn until like recently. You know, he's back home. You know, you know, he just fought a kickboxing fight Saturday. Oh no, what he's fighting? He just fought a kickboxing fight and won Saturday. So, and I text him, told him congratulations. Uh, say he trying, you know, oh, make some moves. Cool. But he can't, you know, Mike, you know, he, you know, did his time, whatever, whatever. He. He back out, you know what I'm saying? He fought uh, Saturday, a kickboxing match. And, okay. uh, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to get going. But uh, I just want to say, uh, yo, uh, your eighth fight, you beat, you stopped Wesley Martin. He was, uh, you know, saying a, a, a little name, you know, in the game. Then you, uh, two fights later, you beat Louis Monaco, who, uh, who fought. Dangerous. Louis Monaco could punch. He, uh, he knocked out Buster Douglas. But he was on a break, so they called it, you know, uh, a no contest. But uh, he could punch. Monaco fought a lot oh. of the guys. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you, you know, you, uh, then you fought my man. You beat my man, Big every, every Bigfoot Martin. Big, Bigfoot, me and Bigfoot was in camp with Riddick Bow about three or four times. He was my buddy. I always laughed up and talked to him. You beat, you beat Bigfoot Martin, and you kept moving. Then you beat Craig Payne. You stopped Craig Payne, who was an amateur star. Who uh, Craig Payne it's, it's, beat Stevenson? He beat he beat to, Teofilo Stevenson. So, I didn't know that. That's what he told me after the fight. Didi told me. Didi yeah. Armour, man. He rest in peace. My my coach, Woodlawn Box friend. You know that dude. He fought. I'm like, what? I thought Didi. You know he was at old age. I didn't you know what the hell he's talking about. And man, you just confirmed it. Man, I didn't know that. Wow. Hey, somebody got a question for you. Uh, uh, Frizz, they asked, why does Dan Raphael dislike you so much? Oh yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, he's got the, he's got he's got the hots for me, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's unfortunate. Yeah, this it, is just so unfortunate because, um, you know, I, I'm I'm a champion. Of what's right, and you know he's, Everybody. you know he's always like bashing. Fighters, he never threw a punch in his life. I mean, he has no idea what the sacrifice we go through to, right. you know, to, to go in that damn ring. And for him to be bouncing off, not just me, other fighters in the past, you know, Wiki Wright, a lot of them, I can name a lot of them. And for him to stay, you know, criticize fighters and, 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 and disrespect the sport, you know, I mean, I have to put him on, on the spot, you know, I mean, like, dude, I mean, you, you, you're not even a, a so-called expert. How would they acknowledge you as a... So I'm glad that ESPN did the right thing, then renew his contract, you know, because of all his, you know, controversial, you know, stats against, you know, great world-class fighters like myself, you know, disrespecting, you know, world champions like myself. And, and it, it's sad that this guy, you know, was, was in boxing, you know, talking crazy about us great fighters, you know, that we right. sacrificed. And that's the problem I had with him. Right. Yeah, man, boxing is tough. Yeah, so I'm yeah. I'm looking at you fought some good fighters, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you beat Phil Jackson, you beat every big foot Martin, Craig Payne, Bert Cooper. Uh, you beat Ramon Garbe. I was at that fight uh, at uh, in Elgin. 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I drove that hour and a half drive, came to go check you out. You fought oh, up from thanks, my bag. Hey, did I, did I see you there, though, Money? Do we see yeah, each other? Yeah, I thought you had to fight. Uh, I came to your dress room. Okay. That's when Tito's in the, in the dress room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Yep, I remember. Uh, check this out. Tito Trinidad had just got a victory over Asa De La Hoya. He was a, one of the biggest stars in boxing. The man was in his dress room just sitting next to his father like he was a 10-year-old kid. Wow. I just couldn't believe how humble, yeah. how humble he was. I just saw yeah. him sitting there. I'm like, man, I'm like, you got to take a picture with me. He's like, oh, OK. I took the picture, and it's hanging up in my gym right now. So you still, got, you still got the money. Yeah, I still got the picture with Trinidad. I like Trinidad. OK, cool. Down yeah, to earth. You know Trinidad was a great fighter. Uh, you stopped you stop Clifford 18. You stopped Obey Sullivan. Oh man, you beat you stopped David Izon. Uh okay, uh the David Tua fight. Um, it was a fight. He was doing great. He was doing he was winning, he was looking good. You got yeah. caught. Uh I don't know if I don't know if we, we, we talked about it. I just said, man, watch, watch out for his hook. So keep the right hand yep. up, watch out for the hook. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you took a step back, came right back, and I was at this fight, you knocked out Maurice Harris. I was at that uh, fight, you uh, knocked out Maurice tough, Harris. Tricky. Now, Bob, I was sitting with Chris Bird. Chris Bird was heavyweight champion of the world. Mm -hmm. I said, bro, I said, man, I said, this man got, I said, I sparred both of y'all. And Chris was like, man, you crazy. I'm like, all right. So y'all fought right after Maurice Harris. You fought uh, a fight that I know, and deep down inside, um, a lot of people thought, felt that you won. You've been, you've been a part of a lot of controversial fights. Um, I know it got to bother you. Uh, it still bothers oh, me yeah. about the Olympics and uh, the fight that, that that I got robbed in my career. So I know this bothers Yeah, me. I seen uh, it. I was at the house seeing your fight. I remember that. That's what I heard when you said that from Chicago. I'm like, who the hell is my... I'm like, man, ever since then, I've been a fan. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the Eric Harden fight. You was at that fight. Did you, yep, did yep, you fight yep. Duncan? You didn't fight Duncan that night, did you? No, no. That night I fought... Some dude, I stopped on the first round. And then I, I, I had an opportunity to just watch the whole fight. Right, right. So, yeah, that, that was terrible. They, they robbed me against Eric Harden. So yep. we, both know, we both know how I feel, man. So yep. oh, Chris Bird, very controversial fight. He my man, you know what I'm saying? He, he actually, I told him not to take the fight, not to the fight. He called me and said, man, you was right. He said, Everything you said was Oh, right. wow. So, so, you know what I'm saying? He gave respect for that. Now, now the John Ruiz fight, the John Ruiz fight, man, I thought you was winning the fight. You was winning the fight, and you know what I'm saying? Things happened or whatever, whatever. You um you moved on and two fights later, three fights later, you fought Evander Holyfield. Uh I that's the only fight I didn't see, but I heard a lot of people say that they thought you won. Oh yeah, you didn't see where were you at, Money? What part of the world were you at? I don't know why I never saw that. I, I knew it was pay-per-view too, right? I think yeah, I was in yeah. camp or something, and they didn't have the. And you know, you know, it, and you know, Tim Hardaway was one of the promoters. Wow! In Atlanta, Tim Hardaway, uh, the 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 legend, the crossover king, <laughs> the original crossover. Oh, in Atlanta, it was yeah. in Atlanta. No, no, no. We fought San Antonio Alamo Dome. Oh, the Alamo Dome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, how did you feel about that fight? I mean, uh, two two judges had at one point. And one judge had it five points, which is crazy. But I mean, I know it bothered you and everything, but you know, you didn't get to win. Uh, you know, how, how how do you how did you deal with all this stuff in your life, man? You did not get in fights. You know, it's crazy you say that because I feel like friends, other people would have retired, it would have been broken down mentally. But you know, man, Monty, I came from that, man. I came from a third world country. You know, was born in Puerto Rico. My family came to Chicago, give us a better life. You know, grades in the projects, you know, had neighbors on dope fiend, you know, uh, game bangers, all that. And, you know, boxing was a safe haven for me, uh, Monty. You know, I was blessed, you know, be humble. You know, my mom, she raised us, you know, by herself. You know, my dad, you know, was Papa was a roller star every day. He's had his home. You know, I love him. You know, I miss him dearly. You know, because later on, you know, he, he, you know, I forgave him. You know, he said, man, son, I'm sorry. You know, and, and man, we're always tight. That's one thing. My dad always part of, you know, my life. But, um, but yeah, it, it just, it was, it was, it was hard. But, 
but I, you know, God put me here for a reason. You know, I went through worse times as my youth, uh, money, and uh, my mom. You know, she just installed that grit that you know ain't nothing possible, son. Keep on going after these, the, the, you know, devastating defeats. Well, I mean, devastating, controversial. You know, even to this day, you know, we'll talk about that a little later. You know, people are like, man, how the hell you keep on doing it? But you know, justice will be served, and God, you know, got some plans for me. Okay, I ain't trying to bring back uh, old memories, but that's, that's real. <laughs> we just that's talked real. about we just talked about two huge fights that he didn't get the decision of. Mm -hmm. Later, you fought James Tony on national TV, and Stevie Wonder said you won. Stevie Wonder said, <laughs> Stevie, Wonder, Stevie said he watched the fight with Ray Charles, and they said they had you win about two points. Yep, I mean, that's he, crazy, man. You know, okay. this man, everybody thought was gonna stop me, beat me, this and that. You know, this is the only man that not only whooped Holyfield, stopped Holyfield, you know, he whooped. You know, everybody, you know what I'm saying? John Reeves, I mean, he whooped everybody. So they just thought he was going to knock me out in a couple of rounds. And, you know, money, you knew, you know me. People that know me knows, hey, when I got that that glare in my eye, um, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm taking care of business. And that's what happened that night. It was unfortunate. I was, on, you know, on the B side of the bout, you know, and uh, Dan Goose, who was the promoter, he ended up, you know, siding with his fighter, having, you know, they don't want to pay the, they, they pay the judges and, yeah, politics once again. Okay, let me ask you this about. Okay, I'm I'm glad you brought up Dan Goosen. He passed away. No disrespect. Uh, no right. How, how did you? How was your relationship with Dan Goosen? Man, that's the interesting part. It was pretty good because I don't know if you know, Monty. You know, I started my career. I turned pro where America presents. You know, Dan Goosen was like the the main man in America presents. Do you remember that? Right. That's why you fought Duncan because y'all both was on with American. Yes, yes, yes. So they threw me to the walls from the beginning. Right. You know, they put me in there with every big foot Martin, you know, uh, Burt Cooper, when, when I only had like single digit fight, eight fight, nine fight. So they would try to get me beat. You know, I was one of those fighters that just surprised the whole heavyweight crop they had in 96. You know, they, they signed Powell Wolfgram, Lawrence Clay Bay, um, Lance Whitaker, you know, Monty Barrett. I'm mean, keep going, going. And out of all those, you know, heavyweights from class of 96, I was the one that's, that, that overcame all the obstacles, you know what I'm saying? He put me in there with the black rhino. You know, I was the 11-one underdog to get knocked out once again, and I proved the doubters, you know, like brothers like yourself and people that know me in box, I mean, know of, know me, knew that I was going to win. Just me and my family, like a handful of you all knew that I was going to win, but not the whole boxing world. So, right, right, you know. right, right. Because, you know, America Presents had Wolf Graham, they had Duncan, they had David, they had all, yep. and uh, what's the other, the kid from, um, from France? Uh, yeah, Mindy. Who gave Felix Savon the blues? Right. Yes, all those guys in the gym. You know what I'm saying, and you know, what I'm saying you beat Duncan and everything. And okay, you, you, okay. After the James Tony fight, this is the third controversial. After the third controversial fight in your career, two fights later, you came back and knocked out Bruce Selby. So you still showed that you, you know, what I'm saying you had harder grit and your metal. You know, what I'm saying. Uh, right. Uh, more Mac McCall. What, what happened with the McCall fight? I know y'all cool, y'all spar together and everything. What happened with McCall? Yeah, yeah. Again, politics, I was on the B side. You know, it's unfortunate. These these clowns that I was dealing with at the time, John Wirt, who today and age, you know, ended up having a victory against him at court. You know, he's one of the guys who's tied up with the WBA and the Manuel Chart Camp, you know, the promoters in Germany. So they they you know, they're trying to knock me out my top ranking that the federal judge. The Southern District of New York awarded me because you know I you know I earned that you know now that you get to you know that fight you know you know, I, you know I earned that and um you know it just you know it, it, you know I'm gonna fight for my right you know these guys you know they totally wrong and, and, and the judge they got sided with me. Okay, you fought McCall in 2010, all right? Then you fought my teammate. We had the same trainer. We, so, I, so I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, real quick. So, sorry to throw up. It, hold on, Manny. And McCall, you know, again, he was, you know, he was from that stable, the Heavyweight Factory stable. And the uh, Heavyweight Factory was the promoter. They don't want to do the fight at the Hard Rock. You know, those are his people. Chris Lawrence, you know, the dude who take care of Holyfield right now. You know, 
the dude, you know, he's got a little chat or whatever. So, of course, they paid the commission, the referees, and, and you know, they gave McCall a, a split decision. And, you know, and, and I'll box him. Even McCall says, you know, you know, he, you know, oh, man, you know, it could have been your way. You know, at least, you know, he, he acknowledged that. You know, McCall was mad enough to, you know, tell me, you know, the truth. Okay, so I just named, okay, you got eight losses. I just named four controversial fights. So out of the eight losses, how, okay, how many did you feel that you really lost? Okay, I wrote eight losses, the ones that I truly feel that I lost. And I'm being honest, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest, man. <laughs> uh, Dave Vitua, and that's it, tell the truth. Me personally. Just David Stewart, because he stopped me. Okay, okay, so, okay, so, okay, so, okay, the fight you guys stopped me for, like, that you like. Okay, your last fight in 2014 was against, was against my teammate, my stable mate, I'm sorry, my stable mate, Ruslan Chagayas. I, I sparred Ruslan, you know, Thel used to train him. So, you know, so back in the day, so we was, we was in yeah, Vegas your brother, training. your brother told me that we, we just talked, like, two days ago, me, me and your brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ruslan, I spar Ruslan back at uh, Johnny Tacos back in the day. Oh, okay. okay. Big, big, thick, get swole, you know, big, thick guy. He ended up being heavyweight champion of the world. That was your last fight. Uh, uh, most people thought you won, and then they came out and said you fell a steroid test, which was a lie. You won a lawsuit, and six years later, you're still dealing with it. Tell us what you've been going through for these six years, bro. Well, repeat that again. Money, you froze for for a couple you of seconds. Ruzlan, you fought Ruslan in fourteen. Everybody thought you won the fight. They came out and said you failed a steroid test, which was not true. You won the lawsuit. Right. You've been fighting in court for six years. What what's going on? You tell me. How's everything? <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, I, I did an interview with this uh, English uh, channel TV guys. I, I, I posted on my Instagram. Uh, my Facebook yesterday. I don't know if you got a chance to check it out. Did you get to check check that little interview out that I sent money or no? You sent it to me? No, I sent it on my on my Facebook, you know, for, so everybody can see. So I don't think you, you probably see it. I'm gonna send it to you though. But huh? I said I'll go I'll go back and check it out. Okay, but 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 to answer your question, um yeah, you know, again, this is the WBA, you know, the association. You know, I put the blame on them. Because when I won my case, you know, after I won Busan Chagayev in Chechnya over there in Russia, you know, they owed me a rematch, Montel. And, uh, you know, I, it, it was kind of funny because they, they didn't pay me the money that, that I agree on. Because just, just, you know, for starters, you know, I wasn't going to fight that fight. Because my wife, you know, she had my son, little Liam, you know, he's six years old. God bless, he's healthy now. And my wife, gave birth. So this is two weeks before the fight. So I'm I'm gonna see freezing up, friends. Go go to the Wi Fi spot, friends. <laughs> that's that's his hot spot right there. Hi friend, you know, help what's that? Go go to your Wi spot. Your okay, spot. there we go. All right, go. go ahead, go you froze up again. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Can, can you hear me now? Yes sir. All right, okay. cool. So yeah my child uh, I don't know if you knew, but I was going to take the fight, you know, like two weeks before the fight, I was going to cancel it due to my wife giving birth. But on top of that, you know, it was a, it was a bad, well, a difficult birth because my son, you know, she ended up getting sick. You know, my son was, was a little sick, but he, thank God, you know, they ended up getting a little better. So, so the country's uh, president, uh, Kadyrov, you know, he's the president of Chechnya, him, and Rubinsky, uh, Povetkin's uh, promoter, mm -hmm. uh, Andre Rubinsky, you know, that billionaire Russian dude. Yeah. So they call my phone, you know, and this is like, man, like, they, like three, four days before, before the fight, and they were pleading, man, listen, man, is there anything? I say, man, I mean, I ain't trained in two weeks. You know, my wife just had a birth. My, you know, she's sick, and, you know, my son, you know, he's, you know, they, they're in the hospital. So I don't think I'm gonna, and then they ended up, that's when they, they they ended up raising my purse from a quarter of a mil to a mil. I said, man, you know, if you guys- Damn. Make it, Yeah, yeah, did you hear about that, Montel? 
Uh, vaguely, I remember. Yeah, vaguely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they raised my money to a mill, right? So, you know, I, you know, we, we all came with me and my wife, everybody was sat down. You know, my advisor, my attorney, you know, you in good shape. You trained for three hard months. You know, you, uh, you, know, you ain't done nothing in two weeks. But you, that muscle memory, you know, you know how to go, Martel. You know, we don't lose that muscle memory. You know, and, uh, you, know, it, it, you know, it was a couple of days before the fight. So, so we ended up agreeing to it, you know, based on the thing that really made the deal, though, guys, is the rematch clause. They promised me, you know what, we'll give you a rematch since, since you know, you, you ain't been on nothing in two weeks. You know, I ain't, haven't trained because of the situation of my, my son's birth. Then we'll give you a rematch clause. So that's what sealed the deal. And the WBA agreed to it. The World Boxing Association agreed to it. And so by them agreeing to it, any association, the WBC, IBF, WBO, they have to make sure you get paid. The, you know, the association got to put that, you know, in context that after I fight, that million dollars going to be either wired to my account or I'm going to get a check. So, you know, here we go. I'm in garage, like two days, Martel. So I leave a day and a half before the fight. A day and a half. So it was kind of cool because I slept through the whole flight. So by the time of fight time, I was well rested. So I was in jet lag. Thank God. I was in jet lag, which is incredible. You know, even though, you know, I left a, a day and a half, two days before the fight. You know what I'm saying? Well, I was fine. I was asleep. So I was well rested. I was pumped. I, you know, I was already in shape because of my muscle memory. And you see the performance I did. You know, I, you know, I took it to him. You know, you know the, 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 the president, Kadyrov. Not only did he went inside a ring, remember, you only allow four corner men for a heavyweight, for any championship fight. You only allow four corner men. Am I correct, Montel? Just four, right? I thought it was three. Maybe it might be four. It might be four. Oh, okay. It might be four. I just, for I a just championship know, fight. Two, you know, two trainers and a cut. I think it's four. Right. It might, it might be four. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it is four. Well, I'm pretty sure you go do your stats. You, you, you'll right, see. It's probably four. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. But so they had four already, you know what I'm saying? So during the fight, you know, during the twelve round championship fight, not only did he go in one time, because you know, he was worried, you know, the, the president of Chesnia. I mean, who's gonna stop the president of Chesnia and be like, dude, you can't come up here? Nobody. So he didn't go just once or twice or three times. That dude went in four times. That's why you'll read the story after we talk. It's in my Facebook. You you'll see it. I'm gonna send it to you too. Four times. So what happens? Hold on, guys. Hello, can you see me, Monty? Yes. Yeah. What happens? What ha what happens after you go in the ring four times? I tell with your with your experience. What happens if, if someone outside of your, your 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 training team? What will happen? If you, you said if, if if they do what four times? If they step up in the ring. Why the why the why the fighter is in his corner? Disqualify. You get disqualified. Right, right. I mean, that's right, right. Can you believe the WBA did not disqualify uh, Chagayev when the president of Chechnya went in there four times? Four. My, my t I should have been heavyweight champ. Uh, more than uh, once. More than once. More than no, once. No, no, no. I, right, but I should have been heavyweight champ once that dude went in the fourth time. Whatever round that was. The, the, Six, seven, eight, that was why, you know, you know, off the record, with, you know, I might have a nice little complaint, you know, coming up soon against the association because my my rights were violated, uh, Montel. All right, all right. So, okay, but that was six years ago. So where are you going from here? What, what, what's next? Yeah, so right now, you know, I have court next uh, next month, which is in a couple of weeks, you know, finally for that manual chart situation, you know, because, uh, you know, remember, we're going back, you know, when, when Ch Ch Chigaya, the, the WBA ended up, you know, not actually violating my rights, the Southern District of New York, when I won my federal case against the Russians, remember, against Chigaya, I got my money, and I finally got my rematch. But again, the WBA, then I put Lucas Brown against Chigaya. So I had to, you know, had no choice. So I had, once again, sitting on the shelf, whoever wins that fight, I fight. So Lucas Brown, you know, he ended up knocking Chigaya out, right? It was an upset. Do you see that fight, Montel? 
Uh, is that the one he when he failed the, st the test? Yes, uh, Lucas Brown failed the test. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Everybody cheating. Huh? Right, 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 right. So this is where I'm going with it, Montel. So due to that, so my fight got scrapped because this guy's not the champ no more, uh, Jagaya. So they gave it to, uh, you know, he was the champ. But after they found out he, you know, he got steroid, they stripped him. So they they ended up trying to reinstate Jagaya. But Jagaya said, if I had to fight Okendo, you know, he ended up retiring. So they ended up giving him the championship back. But because he didn't pay the fees, you know, Chigaya retired, so the, the title technically became vacant again. So when it became vacant, I tell, so the WBA, again, put me, put me to fight against another heavyweight, which is your boy. Uh, let's go, let's go bum. I mean, let's go cheater. Let's go uh, clown. You know, whatever you want to call him. Uh, I ain't going to say champ because he ain't no champ in my book. But, yeah, so, so here I go training three months, you know, away from my family in Florida. You know, nice little brother. You know, and this guy doing publicity stunts and all that, you know, coming to my face like he's going to do something. And, you know, I'm looking at him like, dude, I'm going to beat the dog out of you. I ain't saying nothing. I'm going to do it right in the ring. So he ended up testing positive a, a week before the fight. You know, he he ended up testing positive. So I had ended up, you know, filing a lawsuit against him, you know. So my former attorney and promoter, Bobby the Clown Hits, and, and uh, John Work, they ended up, Settling recently, like two weeks ago, without my authority, with with uh, Shannon Briggs, uh, uh, heavyweight factor, you know, the promoter. So this is breaking news, guys. So hopefully you guys be able to say that, you know, tell tell the, the public that yeah, these two clowns who aren't my promoters, aren't my you know my attorneys or nothing no more, ended up uh, settling my case against Shannon Briggs, you know, for unsuspected amount of money. You know, give me. I ain't no telling how much, but so that's why I'm going to court next week, you know, to take care of that business. So there we go with that, with the fight with Shannon Briggs. But now, uh, 2018, I was supposed to fight Manuel Char. You know, that's another bozo, another clown, you know, from Germany. You know, uh, WBA took my rights once again, 2017, after the fight with uh, Shannon Briggs and go because of test steroids. So the WBA ended up putting Manuel Char versus Alexander Ustinov. That Russian dude. So, so uh, Char ended up being Houston all the seven foot dude, the karate fighter, or whatever. So he ended up beating him. And um, so once again, they put me on the shelf. The WBA. I was supposed to fight Houston all before Char, but they ended up putting Char, you know, because again, the politics, the WBA. So here I am once again getting pushed back. You know, I, I ain't no spring chicken. So, and now. We getting ready to fight a week before the fight. Getting ready to go to Germany to fight Manu Chart. He tests positive for two hardcore steroids. You know what I'm saying? 2018. So then I sue them. You know my money's in escrow. So that, so my my case next next month. You know will be you know finally getting justice to get my money. That's in escrow. You know you know I have you know a nice amount of money in escrow and you know thank God the judge ended up siding with me. So they see you know that you know these people you know are are working in bad faith. They're, the association, which is great, you know, on my behalf. So yeah, so so next week, you know, you know, next month, hopefully we'll get justice and uh, we'll finally find out, you know, the WBA, you know, they stuck, uh, you know, I'm stupid because now they try to have Don King's fighter, uh, Trevor Bryant, fight Manuel Char for a title that's rightly supposed to be mine, you know, and they ended up reinstating Char as the champion after he failed the drug test. So this is worse than Austin Trout. You know, against the WBO, you know, he just he just sued the WBO for forty million dollars. So I don't know if you guys are aware of that he just won the case last week. Are you guys aware of that, Montel? Oh, who's it? My uh, Austin Trout. Remember Austin Trout with with uh, with Al Heyman? Yeah. He beat he beat Miguel Cotto. Right. Yeah, yeah. I know you talking. About. Yeah, you know he just won. You, you know he just beat. Uh, it was a uh, it was a uh, damn. I forgot you called that, but anyway. The federal judge ended up uh, ended up siding with Austin Trout for the forty million dollars that the WBO did on Austin Trout, which is they ended up putting another fighter, Leon Smith or Liam Smith or some, to fight somebody else in England instead of Austin Trout. You know, Austin Trout. You know, he was the manager. It's like my 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 situation, but my situation is triple 
worse than Austin Trout. So I'm pretty sure the WBA, you know, shaking in their legs, shitting in their pants right now. Now that the federal <laughs> judges are seeing, you know, through these motherfuckers, you know, shady ass, you know, likeliness. So, um, yeah, so Austin Trout ended up um, getting ready to win, win that case. So now, you know, that's in my position, you know, with, with my case coming up next month. So now the WBA is going to have to negotiate with me, you know. I mean, they're going to have to, you know, pay for some hardcore time that they put me you know, on the cross pretty much, sacrificed me to have these other guys fight for me. And now here I am, you know, damn near 50 and, and, and no justice, you know what I'm saying? So, so um, here, that's where we at today, Montel. I hope the best for you, bro. Six years. Can I ask him something? Can I ask him something? Yeah, of Wait. course. And you know, I, it's, it's, it's amazing, man, doing this show with y'all, man, because I learned so much more about boxing that I didn't oh, wow. understand. Oh. And cool, uh, cool. the thing that's most, that, that I'm finding out most is that, man, a lot of you guys are getting robbed in these fights, man. And it seems that boxing is not on the up and up. Are they trying to clean it up right now? Yes. To uh, answer your question, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you the article to you, Montel, of Austin Trout. Forty million dollars victory. I'm pretty sure they're gonna negotiate, they're gonna settle, they're gonna break them off with something, and hopefully they'll crown them champ and all that, which is what they gotta do. So, in that article, what I'm gonna send you, that's what Austin Trout, you know, pre pretty much put everybody on, on a spot. All the association, this is, this can't be be done no more. You know, it's fair and square. We sacrifice our blood, sweat, and tears to get this position to fight for the championship. Now you're gonna pull me on the side. Because that promoter's paying you this money and to put his fighter to fight a lesser known fighter and win a championship, that's wrong. That that's right. wrong. So me and Austin Trout, we're poster child of, you know, of the clean up the, against these associations. You know, to do the right thing, you know, the WBO, you know, which is from Puerto Rico, you know, that's for my own people, but I don't even fuck with them because they're 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 phony. They were suspect from day one. Even Tito mm -hmm. Trinidad never messed with the WBO. And here here we here I am with the WBA. You know, it was from, you know, Latin, Latin America country as well. And they treat me like, you know, a sacrificial lamb and, 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 and treating all the, you know, Europeans, all, you know, people that put their little wealth in their little pockets. So, yeah, we're, we're going we, we, we to clean up the sport, me and Austin Trout, pretty much. So yeah. how many how many yeah. lawsuits do you have pending? Right now, I just got one, which is next month. It's going to be over with. Okay, next month. So it'll be after six years. So what, what are your plans? Yeah. Back yep. in the ring. Oh, you know, I'm planning to stay active, you know. I'll, you know, once this corona thing slows down, I'm pretty sure several states in the Midwest be open soon. You know, I want to do a little couple more. And, um, man, I, I'm just praying to do one more big dance. You know, you know, for my advanced age, I mean, I feel great. My tell, I, you know, I run my daily miles are not no three miles, four miles from old heavyweight like myself. You know, I run a good five mile, five and a half miles daily, you know, with sprints in between. And, you know, I stay in the gym, you know, and, and I'm a condition. I mean, I don't be sparring, going going to war in the gym like I used to do with you guys back in the day. No, I mean, I'm smarter than that now, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to war in the ring. So I'm staying in shape, my tell. I'm, I'm staying, you know, I'm 225 right now. 225, 230, you know, I fluctuate when, after I'm eating, after I run, you know, go back to 230. But, you no, know, when I'm in shape, you know, the fight shape, 225. Okay, okay, man. I hope the best for you, man. I know you've been through a lot. And and but for me, to go through all the BS I went through, and mm -hmm. I, I know that I, with all the BS I went through, I feel sorry for you. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I, you, know I'm saying? you should have been world champion. Uh, that's something that's been you know, taken away from you, and I know you want it. Thank you, brother. You got family Thank and wife you, and brother. kids and everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Your, your little brother, that's my man and everybody. So I just <laughs> hope, man, I hope everything work out for you, man. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, so you're going to know next month about the lawsuit. Yes. Wait, wait to get a date about a fight. Yes, yes. So I want to you know, put you guys up to speed next month. You know, we'll have some breaking news, you know, and uh, hopefully, you know, be bigger than Austin Trout's, you know, victory because mine's worse than Austin Trout. But I'm happy that he's doing something to clean up the sport against these associations as well as our man was just saying. Okay, well, you know what? That's what we're doing. Cause, you know, I know how to get in touch with you. We, we, we real cool. Once you get an update of what's gonna happen with your lawsuit and everything, yep. and fight. We'll have you back on the show, bro. Cool. Thank you so much. The honor. You know, a lot of people don't know. 
my tell the fresh the man to give me fast fries, man. I still owe him two, three oh, pennies, man, but I'm man, gonna man. get to him. Don't worry, I get to what day. Hey, when, we, <laughs> hey, when we win this lawsuit, I say, hey, hey, Bob, when we win this lawsuit, I might, you know, what I'm saying, give us. I'll right, take you out to you. All right, I'll take you guys out for the little, little crab and steak or something. <laughs> hey, 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 uh, Fred, before you go, it's a guy on here, man, named Miko Jones. Oh yeah, oh, he's a he's a Cabrini Green legend. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he, he said that's my man. Yeah, I, I that wanted him to be about. He was knocking people on the streets. We used to all go to big disco party when I was a shorty. You know what I'm saying? He was like my big brother. Like, right. He, he said me. that. He said, "Man, that friends, that's my man right there." He's like, before he went pro, we was boxing out in the streets and stuff like right, that. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, he's the greens. Yep. He was that's what's greens, up, man. man. We go way back. Hey, one thing I want to say about both of you guys and then talking to all y'all boxers, man, y'all some humble guys, man. You would think that most boxers are like savages, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to have a right. savage mentality think, to right. do it. But, man, right. you you You're all think. are some of the best guys, man, ever, man. And uh, Thanks, I just want to thank you love. for letting me be a part of this show. And, man, continue Ooh. success with what you're doing, big fella. My man, thank you, brother. All right, Monty, we'll be getting up soon, okay? All right, friends, man. Take care, man, and God bless right, you, man. Brother. All right, thank you, Thanks God for being bless. on the show. I'm going to bring you back as you get your news, your good news. Yeah. We're going to celebrate cool. and talk about it. Cool. Sound. Thank you, big bro. Love you, bro. Light heavyweight cool. champion of the world, Martel Ice Griffin. We up out of here, big baby. All right, Ice. All right, Bob. Peace.